This is part one in a series of lectures I'm going to refer to as section 5.1c, where I go back to section 5.1 and I fill in the proofs of all of the theorems concerning finite sets. In this particular lecture, I'm going to talk about the pigeonhole principle. Here's a definition we've seen before. For each n in the natural numbers, we define n sub n to be all of the natural numbers from 1 up to n. Then the pigeonhole principle says that for all m and n in the natural numbers, if m is bigger than n, then there does not exist an injection from n sub m into n sub n. Let me first explain why this is known as the pigeonhole principle. Uh, suppose we have such an m and an n, and we have a function f from n sub m into n sub n then n represents the total number of pigeonholes and m represents the total number of pigeons and um, if i is an element of n sub m then f of i tells us the number of pigeonhole that pigeon i goes to and it's saying that if we have more pigeons than pigeonholes then at least two pigeons have to wind up in the same a pigeonhole and therefore this function f can't be an injection. The proof of this theorem is going to be by induction, and so you have to ask yourself, is it going to be induction on the m that appears in the theorem, or the n? Well, here's the beginning of the proof, and I'm going to write the proof by induction on the n that appears in the theorem. Um, so we're going to let s be the following set. It's the set of all natural numbers little n such that for every m, if m is bigger than n, then there does not exist an injection from n sub m to n sub n. So we're going to prove by induction that s is equal to n and that will complete the proof of the pigeonhole principle. So here I'm reminding you what is the set S that we're working with. This is just a copy of what I wrote on the previous page. And the first step is to write the proof of the basis step. So the basis step means we have to show that 1 is an element of this set. So what does that mean? That means given any natural number m, if m is bigger than 1, then it's impossible for there to be an injection from n sub m into n sub 1. Remember, n sub 1 is just simply the set singleton 1. It's the set consisting of the single um, number 1. So do you see why it's impossible for there to be an injection from a set having at least two elements into n sub 1? See if you can write down the proof of that. Well, here's my proof of the basis step. We have to show that 1 is an element of S, so let's let M be an element of the natural number. So I'm just reading from left to right. Let M be an element of the natural numbers. Suppose M is bigger than 1. I have to deduce that it's impossible for there to be an injection from N sub M into N sub 1. And so what I do is I just simply give myself a function. Um, give myself any function from n sub m to n sub 1, and I just convince you that it's not an injection. So this is really a direct proof. So here's the idea. Since n sub m has at least two elements, and since the range of f has to be 1, it follows that all the elements, so in particular at least two different elements, must map to 1, and that proves that f is not injective. So that completes the proof of the basis step. Now for the inductive step, so what is the inductive step? The inductive step is we give ourselves an element n in the natural numbers and we assume that n is an element of s and we have to prove that n plus 1 is an element of s. And The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to argue by contradiction. So I have to convince you that n plus 1 is not an element of this set. I have to show you that it's not the case that for all m in the natural numbers if m is bigger than n plus 1 then there doesn't exist an, in, an injection from n sub m to n sub n plus 1. So let's look at the negation. So I'm, I'm assuming the negation of this statement. And so let's take the negation of it. It says that there exists an m in the natural numbers such that m is bigger than n plus 1 
and there does exist an injection from n sub m to n sub n plus 1. So that's what I've done down here. I said suppose n plus 1 is not in S, thus there exists an m in the natural number such that m is bigger than n plus 1, and there does exist an injection f from n sub m to n sub n plus 1. Now the idea is I want to somehow reduce it to, I want to convince you in order to get my contradiction that I can produce an injection um, from n sub something into n sub n because then I want to um, you know, use the fact that, the, that n is an element of s. So I'm going to consider, so I'm going to look at the very biggest element of n sub m, namely m, and I'm going to see where it maps. If m maps to n plus 1, then, um, so I'm going to consider two cases, the one where m maps to n plus 1, and the, where, the one where m doesn't map to n plus 1. So you see I've written that here. We consider separately this case and this case. This is the easiest of the two cases. If f of m is equal to n plus 1, then for all j's smaller than m, f of j is not equal to n plus 1, because remember we've assumed that f is injective, so only one thing can map to n plus 1. And therefore, if we restrict our f down to this set, we know that the restriction of an injection is always an injection, so it's still an injection, but it's mapping not into n plus n sub n plus 1 anymore, it must be mapping into n sub n, right, because nothing can map to n plus 1 um, in this set. But you see, m minus 1 is bigger than n, and therefore we've contradicted the fact that n is an element of s, right, because we've produced an injection from this set into n sub n. So that gives us our contradiction. Now the other case is the one where f of m is smaller than n plus 1, and the idea is that we want to somehow reduce to this case, to case 1. And so we do, uh, in order to do that, we're going to introduce a certain auxiliary function. Okay, so here's our assumption, f of m this time smaller than n plus 1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new function g, and, and the idea is I want to um, permute the elements of the target space n sub n plus 1. So what I do is I, I leave, I look at um, the elements n plus 1 and f of m. So the assumption is that those are different from each other. So I'm going to define a new function g, which leaves uh, the element alone if it's neither one of these two. And then, for, the, for these two, it interchanges them. If x is f of m, then I let it be n plus 1, and if x is n plus 1, I let it be f of m. So essentially, I've taken all the elements of n sub n plus 1, and I've interchanged two of them. So that's clearly a bijection. And now what we do is we take the composition, f composed with g. So that's going to map n sub m, f will take us from n sub m into n sub n plus 1, and g will map n sub n plus 1 to itself, so that gives us a function from n sub m into n sub n plus 1. And it's a composition of two injections, and therefore it's an injection. So we have an injection from n sub m to n sub n plus 1, but look at what the image of m is. m, the first piece, takes you to f of m, and what does g do to f of m? It maps it to n plus 1 because of this. So now we have an injection from n sub m to n, sub n plus 1, which maps m to n plus 1. And that, so in other words, we've restricted ourselves back. We've um, reduced ourselves back to case 1. And we showed in, that case 1 cannot possibly happen. And so that gives us a contradiction. So that completes the proof of the inductive step. And so by the principle of mathematical induction, we've shown that S is equal to N, and that completes the proof of the pigeonhole principle.